home de home de home there's no place like home how is everybody doing i know that i'm not in my normal time or place and we are moved in here uh now all the things are here and out of the other spot but uh we haven't settled per se so and it's my wife's birthday tomorrow so um trying to get some things sorted and so on and so forth but how is everybody doing uh, I know that this stream, I think it's Bentley's stream, comes on in 20 or 30 minutes, something like that. Uh, so if people must leave, I totally understand. Uh, but I wanted to say hello, make an appearance. I did a little video this morning, a short one, to show you guys that the rice fish that I've had outside have survived and they're alive and moving around and doing just fine uh, that are... Um, in freezing weather it was 26 degrees this morning when we checked the temperature and then poked the fish with a stick <laughs> so that worked well um they're doing well hello everybody berserk gorilla uh hello carolyn mc uh, zen ginger what's up muppet ray aquatics geek boy hayden tran uh 402 constrictors How's it going? Craig, what's going on? Good eye. Uh, blue ice. All right. So, today I was thinking that we'd chat a little bit about my plans for the fish room slash this house, this property, what I want to do. And, you know, as this channel has grown, this is live, Dell, and welcome. Uh, hey, George, welcome as well. Uh, so, as this channel has grown, it's become a, a business. It's become a source of revenue and income. And I can't thank you guys enough for that fact. You guys, you members, you Patreons, you Super Chatters, whoever you may be, just you guys watching who help add revenue. Um, I've tried to make it so that the ads are just before videos and not in the middle and after and all the time uh but when i do certain upload when i upload a certain way that default gets unset so i have to go back through and check it all so if anybody ever sees ads in the middle of something please let me know because i've also heard that people are getting unsubscribed and ads and all sorts of issues and they didn't click anything new they didn't you know whatever the other thing is now that things are settling down, I also want to get uh, little badges going because you guys have the little S, the super uh, member, I guess, subscriber uh, next to your name, and your name is in bold on my screen. Uh, and uh, so that helps me see your questions. You can also use the at secret history living in your aquarium uh the at sign and then the name of the channel and that will show up on my screen in bold and if I'm in top chat because there's more than say like 80 people in here um, I'll hop into top chat mode which usually I hate if I'm participating in chat hate top chat but if you're doing a live stream it helps filter out the conversations between uh, if you guys are having conversations between each other you know uh, so it helps with that and then if you're a member, your question and your name stays up there actually longer. So that's pretty helpful uh, to me as well. Uh, sorry, guys. Chap lips. Uh, so today I want to talk about... Let's talk about you. No. Um, I want to talk about fish. So we're here... We're fishy, get used to it. Um, what what can I do with the space that I have? So I had an apartment before, and uh, now that we're out of there, basically I started by asking my landlord, hey, um, he's a, a, a Buddhist, and I said, hey, I meditate, which is true, I do meditate. I said, hey, I, I, uh, I sit by a fountain or water usually when I meditate. Would it be okay if I added a water feature? So I got a, a, an aquarium with a, a pump and 
kind of a splashing filter HOB powerhead type thing. Kind of, you know, like this, but falling farther. And that was all good. And then I talked to him and I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to put some fish in my meditation setup. Is that all good? And he just said, oh, yeah, I don't mind whatever you do. Just, uh, just you know, take care of things so that if, it, you know, it's, it's not going to, if it floods, you won't ruin anything and so on and so forth. So basically, you just said it's on you uh, and left it at that. Now, this landlord never came in our unit for any reason ever. Uh, for, for three years, I think, at one point, we didn't see the guy. So... Uh, we weren't too worried about it, but by the end of it, you guys know that I had like 18 tanks, if you count my little two gallon and one gallon jar tanks and things like that. And so, uh, it got a little out of control, but you know, in, in the end, he never actually came in and saw them all. He saw a few and he said, oh, that looks nice when he saw, um, two of the aquascapes. I think he actually saw this tank and this tank, but, um... Yeah, so basically, no big deal, but but I was always worried, and I never, uh, you know, plumbed anything in permanently. I never uh, did a, got a big airline system with, like, a Gemco pump or any of that stuff. So, in this house, we own it, and, of course, it's a little scary. you got hardwood floors, and it's like, oh, man, I don't want to, you know, mess anything up. Where we had the filter spill... It actually warped. You can probably see the rise in between the boards. It kind of tacoed the boards a little bit. And uh, wife was not happy. I wasn't happy either, obviously. But wife definitely not happy. Brand new house, and that happens. Um, so, you know, you got to be careful with water and things like that. And so I've got a little uh, moisture alert sensor now. And um, I want to set up a system... So that if the tank overflows, we uh, or if something breaks or whatnot, that we'd have like a sort of drain system set up. So uh, that'll be coming in the future. But now that we've got this space, we've got this these tanks, and we've got a, a whole wall, a a uh, eleven foot by eight foot tall wall, or seven foot nine uh, inches tall wall. It, the the question is what do we do with this space now you could be super self-indulgent and just get you know uh 620 gallons or something like that or i could easily fit uh i guess it would be 24 10 gallons in that room but i've kind of chosen the middle path and we've we're gonna stick with smaller tanks so I'll show you how things are coming along, and if I lose anybody in the, uh, in the, with the, the reception, because so much water here, and then a, a wall here that's a, a, the original wall, um, and I think they built an expansion on the house, so I think this is kind of a, what do they call it? a load-bearing wall that's extra thick. I don't know if it has cinder blocks or what, but in any case, so I want to show you, first of all, I added this new tank. I'm really happy how it's looking right now. It's daylight outside, so we kind of have that going on, which is, you know, fine, whatever. Um, but we've got Radnocentris, uh, the, the beautiful and very unusual rainbow fish, uh, as well as the thread fins. And then we also have some uh, Pseudomagill luminatus in here. Uh, that usually hang out up top there. There's one There's two in here somewhere, and then we also have shrimp. However, uh, I put 10 or 15 cherry red shrimp in here and I have a feeling a lot of them have gone bye-bye into that big radnocentris mouth uh, rat radnocentris or not or not us or ornate us is uh, how you would spell that how it looks but in any case, I'm really happy with this tank, and uh, I haven't been able to be a minimalist and only plant, you know, a few plants. I I'm really bad at that. I just tend to plant a million things in all my tanks. And so I'm, I'm really happy with myself. I'm, I want to toot my own horn here. 
and say that I did it. Actually, maybe the shrimp are surviving. So, in any case, that tank's now set up, and the yellow or golden dwarf cichlids, they're hanging out in this tank. They're remodeling it on their own, the sand. They're seeming to hang out back there by the sponge filter. Um, and then, uh, this tank we need to redo, uh, this is the one with no heater, filter, anything. So right now, a lot of the tanks have some sort of backup heater in them, but if you'll notice on most of them, the little red light is not on the, on hardly any of the tanks. This one it is because the angels are staying at 82 rather than the rooms 74 to 76 ish, but you know, I've looked around and I've decided, you know, I could have done a 40, 40, 40, I suppose, and had like no arm room, like nothing to, nowhere to go, nothing to move. Uh, or I could do a 40 and a 17 and a 10 and a 10. Um, ideally, I would have liked, I couldn't afford it, but I would have liked to get one more of these and they fit perfectly on a shelf. So it would have been cool to do an aquascape with two rimless 17.5s. I thought that would have been cool. Two 60Ps, uh, as they're called by UNS and by ADA Systems. And then up here, we also have another combo. And I'm kind of just trying these out right now um, to see how the practicality is of uh, accessing them, cleaning them, that sort of thing. But right here, we've got two... 20 gallon longs on a single shelf and as it is right now I really can't see most of the fish in here and while that's not a huge problem in that I don't need to get to these endlers they they're just here to to spawn in mass numbers for the most part and then I also have some synodonis mustard catfish in here the real issue is that when I need to catch them, when that time comes, and also just to check for disease and things like that uh, daily that I do, um, I really can't see them. So I think that what I need to do is change this tank, since it actually is a bare bottom tank still. I think I need to change that tank into a sponge tank, which, me which I mean, like, have a mop, and just a sponge filter or can or, or one of these corner filters or whatever uh, but get rid of all the wood and moss and plant life and literally just use it for when I'm spawning species that are egg scatterers so um, I think that will hopefully then like you know even if I have to chase them with a net I get the big net and I can chase them all down this way but I'll have a clear view all the way down for them and then in here the the kind of idea that I was getting at is for instance I've got these guys which I would love to um spawn these I only have three and I might buy more from Jason at redfish bluefish over on Woodby Island or online I suppose I could buy them too uh, from him but uh, the the idea being that you know these are going for 15 to 30 dollars I know that's a big range but I've seen them for sale in Europe for about 15 euros or 20 euros and in the US you know that's that's pretty expensive, but you can't even find these in the U.S. other than Jason, as far as I know. I've never seen them for sale anywhere else. I've seen them featured at fish shows and maybe, like, somebody like, you know, Gary Lang or, you know, someone comes into the country like Heiko Blair or um, Oliver Knott or something and then uh, ends up, doing an aquascape and maybe he brought them over but other than some weird circumstance like that where I've seen a video I just don't ever see these they're just beautiful fish and uh, I love them and so I uh, it's on Whidbey Island that store Whidbey W-H-I-D-B-E-Y Whidbey um, but so the idea in these tanks is to uh, essentially have the life that I like to enjoy and let's call it an aquascape or at least a habitat or a biotope or whatever in the front imagery 
or in the case of a shelf like this, do one tank with the side profile, with the normal profile, and then have two tanks for spawning and grow out for profit. So that way, uh, and, and here, I mean, I have plenty of room if I want, you know, a 2.5 gallon fits nicely in between two tens actually. Uh, and if I, once I get settled in here, I mean, uh, forgive me, I know this looks like a terrible mess, but I've got all these things, and I also need to find places to stash, you know, the microscope, the testing reagents, yada, yada, all these things, and so, um, the fact that there's extra space back there is kind of nice. At first, it was really driving me nuts, and I was thinking, man, I just want a big tank that will take up the full space, uh, but this works out well too. Um, so up top, so as to reduce the amount of moisture evaporation, uh, I'm doing a, uh, a tank with a five gallon and a five gallon and then two 2.5s, but that leaves a lot of room up here for whatever, um, be it a pump, be it, uh, later if we need a reservoir to do a, an RO system and, and uh, some sort of plumbing thing, uh, then we've got it. But when I looked at how tall 12 inches is, uh, I mean, there's really only another 12 inch clearance before the ceiling and it just seems like a recipe for high humidity and um, problems. So I didn't want to go there. Then this tank, this was going to be where the 55 might have been, but it just, it didn't work out. The people who helped me move, bless their hearts, uh, meant well and, you know, all that. But in the end, uh, they could only move things where they, where, where they did. And then we started filling up water right away. But I just wanted to show you again. I mean, look at these Reed Tetras. These only go for $1.99 uh, at most pet stores usually. But... Right now, I don't know if it shows up on camera at all, but they have this beautiful blue to turquoise kind of periwinkle color in their body, and it, it's kind of the same as their eye, um, and you just it just catches just right in certain lights, especially on the males, which have the long uh, pectoral flares. Uh, Shelby Ray, welcome. Hello. Uh, so, then it comes down to, all right, what do I want to make use of? I mean, like, how do I see, could you guys see that greenish blue on these fish? I mean, they look silver, and then all of a sudden, boom, you just get this beautiful metallic kind of seafoam green turquoise, I don't know what color you'd call it, but <clears throat> I really, really like them, and there's fish like that that... I would like to breed, um, even if they're not usually bred in the hobby, because you can get them so cheaply and things like that. Well, I'd like to have room to breed them out. And so, if you do a tetrib spawn, um, let's take a look at that setup. So, one really easy setup is to just do marbles and a sponge filter. So, there's no water in this tank right now, but it's marbles at the bottom and the fish in there for a couple days after you've kind of primed them to to get ready they will lay the eggs the eggs will settle in between the marbles and then you move the the parents uh out of there and within two to three days um, with, with almost all uh species of tetra resbora things like that they hatch very quickly they're quick hatchers but they're very small like eyelash like the size of an eyelash cut in half uh when they're first born um the other way you can do it is by having a blank tank and if they have sticky eggs like all these rainbow fish do then you can use either a synthetic mop or, see this is just the old filter intake from my old uh, aquarium out in the living room. And so, right there, boom, it's just a big moss spawning mop. They could lay eggs over here, that's a possibility, but I mean, with this kind of setup, the chances are far greater that um, in the early morning it's darker over here and they tend to do it early in the morning. And so I think they'll, 
they'll take advantage of that. But then what I'll do is I'll have a tank, for instance, uh, I could even fit another one back here, but I'll have a tank to take this and just put it in there and let wait a week and see what happens. So I can do the lazy man's version of breeding hard to breed little nano fish by just kind of uh, moving around, playing musical chairs essentially with the foliage. So I can do the same with the Anubius back there when, when these tetras are in here and things. And then for cave spawners or nest dwelling critters, um, we'll just have to see uh, what happens. But um, the babies that they had, they had a, a group already. And the babies that they had are over in this tank also, which I know is kind of weird. But they're in here um, hiding probably. They're pretty skittish. But they're real teeny still. So they're in here because all these rainbow fish have very small mouths. Um, which means that they're not going to be able to physically eat them even if they wanted to. The only thing is it is very hot and humid in here. But that is good news for some of the fish that I'm uh, taking care of. And one of the, the... I mean, it's been in the hobby for a while but you just don't always see it. And that is the uh, Samurai Chocolate Garami. And let's get an appearance to happen. I'll look at your questions in a moment, guys. Sorry, I've just been babbling on because I wanted to get the idea, the thoughts in my head out just to kind of tell you what I'm thinking of this space, you know, before the fact. Now, you guys remember how many shrimp can be in this tank probably and uh there's shrimp pride rock right there so we'll we'll open that up and let them be able to use that if we want but right here come on stay here you can see here we've got a male and then here we've got a female and they're just beautiful fish uh the male has a pouch under his throat. So his throat ends up looking curved. You see that um, angle under the jaw that's so extreme? Uh, that is actually an expandable pouch and they're mouth breeders. So they will blow a little bubble nest and then they will have their babies uh, and they'll, they'll suspend the eggs up in the bubble nest and then they will uh, as soon as they hatch, the father will take them, put them in his mouth, and he'll inflate that pouch so as they can live in the little pouch of his. Um, but they seem to be eating the shrimp, uh, the youngin shrimp, and putting on size well, getting fat and coloring up and all that. And these Malawa shrimp are just so good at reproducing uh, quickly in so many different uh, conditions that I, I I like to use them now as when I start a tank for instance uh, like if I was starting this tank again I would put them in a month ahead of time put 30 of them in there and then literally just uh, wait for them to get pregnant and see that they're gonna have their babies let them have a few uh, let a few of the females have their babies and then boom put the fish in and they've got an ongoing source of food. Now, when I have over 200 of the shrimp already, I mean, I don't know if they'll ever get on top of the population completely, uh, but we'll find out. And in here, we've got the micro, uh, or not micro, but the panda loaches, uh, and I love them, but realistically, they have not been bred in captivity very often. I've got several videos on that, but this tank is more about the blue dream shrimp, and I'm going for quality over quantity with almost everything in this tank, um, or in this fish room, I should say. So I'm, I'm really struggling, or not struggling, but um, attempting to get the best quality um, whatever um, stock I, I end up using, but to get the best quality. 
uh, that's out there uh, for brood stock for the parents. And uh, something happened the other night over here, and that is that that uh, I had rocks in that tank that are down there in the bucket, and this is where those um, golden eye dwarf cichlids were. But I had to move them because I accidentally, I think it was me, I don't think it was disease, but in the back I moved some rocks, and this is another thing that I'm learning. I wasn't up on a ladder, like I, or on a stool or anything like I am now. And so when I moved the rocks, I couldn't really see what was back there, and it was towards a corner and in between another rock. And then when I saw... Uh, yesterday I saw all this foam on top of the water and that's a bad sign when you see foam on top of your aquarium water um, I mean a little bit of bubbles is fine but when you see um, I mean it was more than this it was foam hanging out by the hang off the back um, where it enters and obviously you see there's lots of algae in here. This tank has had algae nonstop, brown algae and red algae. Uh, and I've let it go because I'm just curious. It's the only tank I have with that kind of algae. And I just let it go to see what would happen. It's been over a month. And it just, it never died down. So I think they were producing a lot of nitrates too. But long story short, I smushed one, I think. It died, ammonia spiked, boom. Uh, then another one I found, I found the other one dead first, and then when I explored the tank, I found the one that was decomposed underneath the stone halfway, and I'm, I feel really bad, because I must have smushed it when I moved the stone, but that probably caused a cascade effect of ammonia and nitrates, and boom, then started killing the other fish. It killed a couple of the baby plecos. And so I moved the baby plecos in with the rainbow fish until I get some Borneo loaches or hill stream loaches or I don't know, whatever, something. Um, so yeah. And then the other thing that I'm excited about before I get to reading what you guys have said is... You know, I've got these lights. We've got a lot of Fluval 3.0s and, and good lighting in here scattered for growing plants. So even though this is all thrashed right now, I mean, look at all the red metallic Valsinaria. You can see how red it gets when it starts to die or break off. But these are all new nodes of starting. And they're just in a pile. I mean, the whole tank is colonized too. So between these tanks, these ones and the ones out in the living room and all that, um, there's a lot of stuff going on plant-wise. I've got crypts growing in some sandy tanks. And, you know, like uh, I just saw someone in the chat mention, I, I like a lot of algae. This is algae on the, this. I took this out of one of the bowls. Uh, that I have my elosoma and my gambusias in. So right now I've got the elosoma in the non-heated, non-filtered, non, 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 non tank. And there's lots of malua shrimp in there too. And then we've got the madaka rice fish and some more elosoma. Uh, I think we've got a pair of elosoma in here and a trio in here. And then we've got the white and peach madaka rice fish and then I collect their eggs as they lay eggs in this floating moss but also this tank I'm breeding bulbs so way back when I got a whole bunch of bulbs of everything from uh, nymphaea uh, Taiwanese lilies and uh, nymphaea minutia nymphaea uh, micrantha lots of different stuff and so I decided that I'd use this tank and this soil here. I just put bulbs everywhere. And then I'd sprout them in the shallow waters and then I move them. So, for instance, I'm going to plant that one in the sand there. Um, and they'll make a run for it if I put them in a deep tank. So I can quickly, if someone, if I talk, you know, if I post a message on Monday about uh, who wants uh, this or that lily or bulb, uh, or a Madagascar, uh, a Pongegeton, or a Pongeton, 
you know, I can say I want Ovasis, or they can say that, and then I can put it into this tank, and boom, it'll grow two to five inches a day um, in this tank, which this tank usually, the TDS is a little higher than the others. TDS is usually 250 or so, and the um, temperature is a little hotter, and then the, the, the actual aquarium light is much brighter with growth spectrum so that brings me to the last little thing about this before we chat in the questions and stuff and that is Talanzias so um, these are very popular lately um, to kill cyanobacteria I either use oxygen if it's cyanobacteria down like this I'll use plant roots to oxygenate it and then if it's all over my tank out in the open like that greenish blue stuff all over um, I will use erythromycin but in any case so uh, this I think these are beautiful if you look here I got this specimen though for $14.99 so I mean people ask big money for certain varieties of these so the other plan since it stays humid in here is I can use these or set up some sort of you know some sort of uh, thingamajig. And in here, by the way, are baby rice fish hatching from eggs. Um, I just take moss and pull it out and put it in there. Uh, but then I can do that um, and, you know, have these hanging around and growing, and I can be splitting them as they're ready. I've got the brine or the vinegar eels and micro worms, and then I've got um, tannin water. I need to make some more of that. And then hopefully we'll do a brine shrimp hatchery here too. So, uh, yeah. And then uh, in here we've got Gambusia. And then the Gambusia should be okay to go actually outside, hopefully. Um, I hope I don't lose you guys, but we're going to go out. Oot and a boot into the backyard. Oot and a boot into the backyard. Uh, and uh, we shall see. Let's see here. Let me switch it over to... Boom. a mess we have going here but along I mean we need to plant our garden we need to build a raised garden and we've got some tanks this is Daphnia so this is all Daphnia in here no fish just Daphnia and a couple random Neocaridinas that have survived this tote I've been using to transport things but now I may bury it and have a 45 gallon that's just basically a black pond liner um and then back here uh if you guys can still hear me and see me hear me see me touch me feel me uh tell me you're gonna hear me so here we've got the rice fish and this was the experiment this water's been sitting here for months i mean since the original owners left and so I thought, well, let's throw some rice fish in here and see what happens with the rice fish. And uh, the rice fish have done great. Um, I mean, they, they, they're kind of hiding right now, but there's three little ones in here. And uh, the other plan is, you'll see, we'll, we'll take a live stream journey also over to the lakes. Uh, right where those trees, that tree line is, we've got two lakes called Twin Lakes. That are real small. I mean, they're like maybe 20 feet deep at the deepest, and maybe each one's the size of a football field or two, probably two football fields. And uh, so then this 55, though, I was thinking about putting either uh, putting a bunch of silt and sand in there and sticks and rocks and stuff they can rearrange and doing um, sticklebacks in cold water or doing um, something like war mouths or pea mouths or you know whatever some sort of local fish um pumpkin seed fish uh blue eared fish whatever uh bluegills i don't know but that's kind of the plan and then out here uh, my wife and i were just discussing the sun follows this trajectory and right now it's over here but this is sunny all day long and so we're trying to figure out right now if my outdoor tanks uh, that I want to set up for breeding because I think native fish are going to be 
one big money but two i just i'm fascinated by the native fish and i want to find the ones up here that people don't catch that often some of the little speckled daces and uh you know the mountain minnows and things like that that are just kind of rare even if they are introduced they're just not as common um and so i'm thinking about building a long strip here for the, for the wife and raising the garden bed i mean of course we'll talk about it because all of this will be drained by tank water and water changes uh so but then at the end i'm thinking of doing a little pond and a waterfall down this is a four foot uh incline or, or whatever you want to call it uh not incline but elevation change and an apple tree here um but I've got a big pond liner at my parents' house about a half hour north of here that we could use. My wife still really likes this space, wants to be able to have bonfires and all that stuff. But out here, I mean, we've got electricity out here. It wouldn't be hard to run just some PVC to get basic um, cold water out here either. Um, you know, nothing too serious. And so, I don't know, I think it would be fun to, to set this up here like a little um <laughs> i've not made contact with the pond neighbor they're never home i don't know what's up with them um uh, but yeah so with all that said now i can catch up a little bit on what you guys have been saying in the chat so let's figure that out <coughs> i do not have the half beaks the half beaks the day after I got them they were in rough shape when aquatic arts got them and they sold them to me as a friend basically they weren't going to be for sale to the public because they had they came in rough they came in um, with some dying uh, overseas and things and the pH had swung from eight down to like six or something on the trip and they were uh, from Lake Sulawesi and so they needed they weren't the gold wrestling ones. They were the um, red stripe ones. They needed to be in that higher pH water. Um, and so even when we fixed it, and, you know, they fixed it, kind of patched them up, but then sending them in the mail, and then the mail was like 12 hours later than it should have been, and the temperature, and it just, it wasn't good. So I do really want to get some new wrestling uh, half peaks. That's one of the big species on my list of species to grow uh so yeah um nice yard you did good eh uh yeah thank you i appreciate that yeah um it's it's i mean it's kind of funny if you guys remember my old place this place is the same price um if you don't include the utilities and the insurance so with all that i think we're going to be paying about 400 more a month uh altogether which sucks but at the same time we own it and we can sell it and 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 um but i definitely want to use energy efficient stuff and so uh in the description where i always post links to things that i like things that i enjoy uh i will have links to you know oh i found this light it's energy efficient oh i found this or that you know um floodlight that's led uh that i'm using on a tank but it can be used outside also uh i've not i haven't been a homeowner i've fixed up apartments for a landlord essentially uh, as part of my rent deal so i i can do some handy work but you know the whole ha having a house i mean we don't have a ladder we don't have a lawnmower we don't have hedge trimmers i mean so we got to get a lot of stuff uh so there's a lot of stuff to do here uh as summer or spring starts uh rolling in kevin says how do you make sure you don't stress the fish when moving them and how long does it usually take for them to drop um the fish uh I, I don't know. I mean, I don't have a way to not stress them. They, they do get stressed. Uh, I don't have any two conos anymore. I had three left and then I gave them to a friend who had a nano tank who wanted them. Um, but the two conos, uh, I would love that's a, those, the Somfongzi, Rasbora, 
um, the Phoenix Rasbora, the Longfin uh, Neon Tetra, uh, Kubota Rasbora or Kubatai uh, Rasbora, uh, Celestial Pearl Danios, and then you know if you look at it, my estimation of the thing, uh, the thing uh, of breeding fish right now is that you know the illness is still causing all sorts of havoc in supply chains and things but if you can breed a fish that's around the 10 to 12 dollar retail range you're going to get about four bucks three to four bucks uh for your cut of that fish and if you can pump those out you know a hundred a month that's 400 bucks in your pocket a month and um you know you need to have tanks cycling with different age juveniles so for instance for that rain for that one 20 gallon rainbow fish colony uh of the three species of rainbow fish in there i'd probably want to take two to three 20 gallons and and grow out the pseudomagill in there um and then have one that's just for fry one that's for the older ones and then they can go back into the tank and get sold off as i go um but then there's also the thing to look at which is i mean i love raising scarlet baddis and things like that but they take forever to mature they are just uh i mean they can take they can be quick if they have everything they need and i don't know the stars align venus is in retrograde i i don't know what why sometimes they grow really fast but i think it's just a survival strategy but sometimes you'll have some of the fry that will grow up in four months and start showing little bands of color and other times it's eight months before this little fish that lives like two years or a year and a half often uh even gets its color and then you've got to figure out if it's really a female or really a male and um you got to put it together with an alpha male then put it with what you think is all females. So there's certain things that, yeah, there's a payoff. People will pay more for those fish, especially if you can get female baddest. But it is time consuming and it does take like three 2.5 gallon tanks just to move around musical fish after you've bred them. <laughs> and that's after the community tank. But I like to have my community tanks aquascaped and then to leave the males in the community tank put the females in the breeding tank in in interest of saving room and feed them both live food for a week or two keep them separate and anticipating and then bring the male put them into the tank where they're going to spawn and breed uh and then uh you know open the gate put them together so to speak and that do that now bettas are another good one for spawning um if you can source enough people who want them and i think the price point that you got to kind of hit is five to ten bucks none of the 20 30 40 dollar stuff unless you've got some real incredible ones that people really really want something new um you're going to be churning out more just kind of um because it's it's kind of unpredictable what kind of better you get a lot of times so there's that um let's see here uh let's all right so if you have a question everyone um please just um uh, uh just say at secret history and we'll we'll jump down to questions here because i'm not going to go back like 20 minutes ago um but yeah it is nice out here today i mean this morning it was cold it was 25 or 26 degrees fahrenheit negative two celsius but today it's been sunny clear skies there should be stars tonight no insulation no cloud deck so it'll probably get really cold again um which just amazes me how the little rice fish i'm watching them right now here watching them dart around now that they don't i mean they think i'm not near but when i get near they'll hit the deck i mean yeah so um but i think another uh yeah we do need a gazebo out here i think another key will be breeding some not fully aquatic plants but some uh immersed plants 
some air plants, you know, just really utilizing that space in there in different ways and then trying to kind of incorporate some gardening with some uh, native fish with some, <laughs> yeah, I see what you're saying, Fish Tropic. Uh, maybe if, maybe 10 years ago, uh, that would have been the plan. Uh, but yeah, yeah, guys, we got over a hundred people that have been hanging out in here all day long, partying it up with me, and we got 45 likes. I mean, maybe you don't like me, that's fine, but then hit the dislike button, uh, because, let, let's do something about that. Just X out of chat if you're on a mobile and hit that mother flipping approval thumb button, please. So that the algorithm gods will say, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's something that, I mean, uh, Serpe designs, if you guys have seen him, he does vivariums, terrariums, riparians, any kind of arium basically uh, he seems to do but you know the other thing that i thought about and my wife hates snakes even though i'd love to do snakes and um i'm thinking about doing poison dart frogs too so that's a whole other thing um it may even i might even be able to sneak in a vivarium or or like a like water at the bottom with a few, I don't know, rasboras or something in it, some phoenix rasboras, and then um, perhaps up above foliage with with some poison dart frogs. Um, the other thing that I could easily breed in that humid room, uh, and I do have a dehumidifier, so I could just nix all of that, but things like the, the um, samurai gourami, they need that, that high humidity or their labyrinth organ doesn't actually develop properly. So you, a lot of people put saran wrap over an aquarium and leave like this much room for air, and then they crank the heat up to around 80 or 82 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 20, what is that, 26 uh, Celsius, and they, they crank it up, and uh, that gives you a nice little... Uh, um, pocket for them to be able to breathe and the babies to go up to the top uh oh thank you so much christine kaiser with the first and only super chat of the night thank you so much we got a five dollar super chat i appreciate it greatly i appreciate all of you for being here for hanging out um and i appreciate all you lurkers lookers and lovers of fish and plants um I like Madaka rice fish uh, for a lot of reasons, but one is we haven't seen them in the West. We're just beginning to see the tip of the iceberg. There are over 680 species, or not species, but variants, uh, phenotypes, morph, morphs of that fish um, that exist in Japan. Different prefectures actually have different families and different styles that are popular. So one prefecture in the south part of the country may have a little bit warmer ones that um, have longer flowy fins, whereas in the north maybe they have tight uh, fins that are very short and intense color. And a lot of them are designed rice fish, and that is the Orzis lat latips. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, and it's also known as the Madaka rice fish, which I think Madaka just means rice fish in Japanese. But in any case, um, <clears throat> I was thinking, you know, that it's different because here we've got koi. I mean, that's been part of our, our um, culture as well. For the last 50, 60 years, they've been popular here. But... Um, these little rice fish only get an inch to maybe an inch and a half, maybe two inches if you've got a big strain with long fins. Uh, they can withstand being under the ice, like mine were this morning. They can withstand up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit for a short term, you know, just during the day and then at night if it cools off. Uh, but, I mean, they can withstand 85 degree weather, and they can um, come in... I mean, there's blue, there's gold, there's pink, orange, red, 
blue, like an off blue. There's silver. There's platinum, which is stark, stark white. There's clear. Uh, and then there's speckled and bronze. So there's just a whole lot of them. Uh, Xanadudu, we got a $10 super chat. Thank you so much, Xanadudu. I appreciate it, brother, brother. Uh, jumping on the super chat chain. Woo, woo. Love your stuff, Alex, and I'm thrilled about your new place plus the opportunities. I am too. Uh, and I, you know, I mean, we've worked really hard, my wife and I. We got set back when I got hit by the lightning and then the dental stuff and all the medical bills. Um, and really, I mean, I, I had a day job and this job. And then now I've transitioned in with the whole lockdown and everything. This plus some random graphic design jobs and some random art commissions and uh, uh odd jobs here and there i mean this has become my sort of income now it's not paying even half of what i used to make right now but my wife also did get a promotion and i'm helping her with her marketing and um she's had a marketing now for a billion dollar company um which you'd think would pay really well it pays okay but it, it isn't not like crazy money or anything uh but i can do all the graphic design and hand done illustrations and things like that for a company called charlie's produce which supplies right now almost every state west of the mississippi there other than i guess the dakotas and like kansas and like the ones that kind of touch the mississippi they don't have a huge presence in uh but out here i mean they supply the local co-op grocer they supply um safeway you know kroger albertson's fred meyer um they supply walmart they supply whole foods trader joe's so literally like they bring the, all the bananas to the west coast essentially um so dole chiquita um Del Monte, they all distribute exclusively through them. And then they wholesale to other wholesalers. And then those wholesalers are distribution centers. And some of them even have one more distribution center. So they're that big, big company that's that's above all that. And if you live in Seattle, you'll know the Charlie's Produce trucks. Maybe in Portland, Boise, Spokane, Missoula, um, Alaska. They've got big hubs there, too, and now Sacramento. But um, they also own Black Rose, Farmer's Own, a bunch of companies now. So they've really expanded, and my wife went from being kind of uh, the executive assistant and kind of, I mean, it was it was a family company that grew from a $200 million company to a $1.4 billion company in the 12 years she's been there. So they've made really good choices. They bought everything in cash. They own their trucks and they lease their trucks out when they're not using them. And I mean, there's just, there's a lot of facets to the business, but um, long story short, uh, they're, they run things pretty lean and they're able, she's able to now support us a little bit better. Um, I'm on her insurance, her health insurance. And so whatever money I get here now, obviously goes towards the channel and growth and equipment or tank stuff, you know, aquarium stuff, uh, new fish, all that. But it also goes towards now, uh, it's starting to go towards living expenses. I'm trying to put my ad revenue towards the living expenses and then any super chats and things like throw that more towards both charities, um, you know, when someone passes away or when someone has cancer in the community, I really wanna be a beacon, our community, you know, uh, fish tube in general, is great and generous and caring but you know our channel is great uh, that way all of you all and um i i just really appreciate um how big of hearts you guys have so i like being able to also use that money for conservation you know maybe one month we'll give away you know the 300 in super chats that i'll make or whatever and then the next month you know i'll keep it uh but i i i am someone who you know um i, I don't care about money that much other than just getting my <laughs> my health my bills paid things like that i don't need a new car i've you know i've never owned a new car i don't need um 
the house is extravagant for me. I, I can't believe I have one. So um, my wife and I have saved a lot and um, lots of buying in bulk and eating, you know, rice and, and uh, tuna for dinner kind of things. Uh, but we, we did it and um, pretty happy about it. But uh, let's see here. Um, oh, somebody asked about rice fish. I think it was Pete. How's it going, Pete? Uh, in Perth uh what to do with uh or or what seasons the uh rice fish spawn in and you know you can get them to spawn in any season just by fiddling with the tds and temperature um like you would with quarries or, or plecos or many fish but um i think in there's kind of uh, most activity in spring and then again at, at the end of summer into fall um in the northern hemisphere the southern hemisphere daisies blue rice fish are in the southern hemisphere and then a lot of them are kind of in the equatorial region which means all year there's either just a wet or dry season so what that changes is the tds a little bit the temperature but mostly the tds and the water level so um for the most part they're very flexible and just uh waiting for signals of we got we got low tds water and lots of food and um the pressure's low like the barometric pressure so let's spawn uh that kind of thing um dan reed says uh i have some neon tetras getting tumors near their mouth is it best to euthanize or try to narrow down the disease um i mean it's probably like cotton mouth or velvet would be my guess um it could be something else. It could be a fungus too. I mean, it could be, could be lots of things. Um, but honestly, if it's one or two fish, or, or you know, and you've got thirty, or if if it's comparably less than you know f five or ten percent of your community, I try to separate those fish immediately. I put them into my um, that little five gallon that's in the top corner that's not heated or aerated i put them in there full of catapa leaves and uh live food i try to feed them and there's a mismatch of all sorts of fish in there uh and if they don't make it they don't make it but if they do um once they get better i may reintroduce them but it's kind of just like sitting there as a disease tank so most of the time they don't get reintroduced they just live happily ever after in that tank or i move them outside and they'll be in a tub for six months and then after at that point you know they won't be carrying the same disease but um that's i don't know i think that a lot of times i don't have the heart to put the fish down frequently uh congrats christine says my quarries are breeding now right on um i don't have the heart to put them down you know a lot of the time and so um if it's a big fish and it's got like hole in the head or something and you just try to treat it and it keeps coming back or bad infections, things like that. Hey, uh, T bone, what's going on? Good. eye. uh, I would say, yeah, I usually put them down and you know, everybody puts fish down differently. I, I've always liked clove oil. It's pretty quick. You kind of shake it up in the water till it's milky. And then, pour it into the the container you know a yogurt container or a cup or whatever wherever you can put the fish that's a small container and that um you know even just a few what would it be cubic milliliters like one to two milliliters so like five little eye droplets maybe um will take out a, a few tetras or a garami or you know something like that size if if that doesn't work i mean uh usually you can put them down numb them with that and then essentially i'll take uh, an exacto knife or uh just a really sharp blade and um just sever right at the head and i know a lot of people think that's gross or bloody or graphic but um for me it's the quickest way that just boom there's no more nerve signals to that body um, the fish isn't going to flop around too much after that. And, um, yeah, so that uh, feels like a fairly humane way if you do decide that you got to put a fish down. Uh, I have trouble catching fish to remove 
or quarantine them because of plants and hardscape. Any tips and tricks? Yeah, uh, leave food out for them. Get whatever food it is they like. Don't feed them anything for two or three days. Then put that food in a net, in a big net, and just put it in the tank, just set the net down in there, and then get another net that's smaller and put it on the other side of the tank. And if you want, just get in a chair and sit there. They'll get curious, they'll go in there, and if they try to start coming out, use the other net and just make a racket on the other, you know, other part of the tank, and they'll dart into the net. The other thing is, if you get a fish against the glass, and it just won't go anywhere other than on the glass like it won't go back into the net go up and down like this quickly uh and so you're bumping the fish and it, it they don't like that almost every species of fish will get bumped once and then it will try to dart left or right or up or down and then it'll hit that side and realize it, it can't go those ways and then it'll dart towards the back of the net, and then you can turn the net and pull it up. So um, I should show that how to do that, um, just because it's a nice little trick, and it works pretty well. Now shrimp, they're always going to dart backwards, so when you're netting them, you want to put the net in behind them, ideally. And if you can get one of those nets that is not a real mesh net all the way through, but more of a bucket... Uh, Aquatic Arts sells them actually and they feel like kind of like this cheap plastic thing at first when you see them and you're like eh, eh. But they're the best freaking shrimp catching net I've ever had and they work well for a little nano fish, too. I think it's that they don't um, They don't look like a, a cave mouth. They're they're just like white and an opening and I think that it might confuse the fish uh, so yeah uh, <laughs> Atkins uh, just popped up working at a fish store. Uh, well, I'm glad that it, that helps. All right, uh, Deb, thank you so much for the. I like the little crazy face super chat sticker, uh, super sticker thing. Thank you. Um, you guys, I'm gonna wrap this up. It's been about an hour talk, but in the comments uh, after this loads, or if you're watching this later, I'd love to hear what fish you think I should breed, uh, and in theory, in, in profit. The other thing is I'm thinking about doing more rice fish, more baddest, more um, things like that, so that I can ship them too, because I just don't like shipping. I'm not gonna ship two Kano Tetras that go for $25 a piece or something, and they're little nano fish and they're, they're fragile, you know? I'm, it's just not worth it for their safety. Um, Dylan says, have you two Conos? What are your thoughts on them for a five gallon black? I answered that question, but, um, I like two Conos. They're expensive. If you can get a good deal on them, then awesome. I actually paid 20 bucks each for my two Conos. So 60 bucks. And then I ended up giving them to a friend for some baddest, some Malaysian, uh, tiger baddest. But, um... Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing is I'd like to get um, some chameleon baddest, some blue baddest, uh, and then more elosoma native fish because they can ship well too uh, and breed more of those. So there's all that to look forward to. I also would like to get some cichlids and things just for my own entertainment um, because I've got the 40 gallon, the extra 40 gallon right now. Maybe I'll do Lake Tanganyika or... Um, Malawi, but really my gut tells me just do Lake Inlay, Thailand, the Golden Triangle, and just, or Borneo, uh, Hill Stream, and just do it up, you know, do a ton of little nano fish of all sorts of species, but I don't know, we'll see. Um, why breed a couple fish when you can breed thousands of zebra mussels? <laughs> oh man, bad joke, bad joke. Goose Not Maverick, what's up? Um, oh boy. Pete, thank you so much. We got the last super chat, I think, of the night. Because I'm going to call it. We're going to pronounce it at 0895 cash for clunkers uh, o'clock. But uh, <laughs> I hope you guys have an excellent night. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for, for coming along with Madness. And uh, hopefully we'll have another history video. Uh, I have an, 
an interesting story of dead ends to tell you about uh, Beckford, who the Beckford pencil fish is named after, the last video I did. Um, he had an interesting voyage. Every trace of the guy is just disappeared into thin air um, <laughs> after that expedition. I don't know. He was a lawyer and he was a senior fellow of the Royal Institute and Museum. And he went from cur helping curate and uh, do the taxonomy with Albert Gunther to they literally got rid of his name in so he's in volumes one through four from 1838 to 1890 or something like that every volume that follows after they give the credit to gunther so i don't know if he got d you know um I, he, they do call him sir in some letters but i don't know if they're saying like good sir you know or if it's a real sir like knighted um, but his father was a very well-known guy who made furniture and owned furniture making workshops and Bickford Furniture, William Bickford was his father's name in the, in the 1760s through the seven through the 1830s, uh, were, was like the height of that, but interesting stuff. And I'm, I'm trying to find out cause the story of there not being a story sometimes can be more interesting. But I'm having some people translate some German um, scanned articles. And under the community tab, if you're a member, uh, I posted some links to the uh, archival stuff from the Royal Institute and from the British Natural History Museum and all that. So, uh, yeah. Um... <laughs> Here, Fishy, thanks. I appreciate that. You were like what Mental Floss magazine used to be back when Netflix was male DVDs. Yeah, well, that was one of my favorite things ever. So, yeah, for sure. I'd love to see a tank, Alex, uh, of the native fish around you. Film yourself catching them and all that. Yeah, that's in the works. I mean, I was at the, I was at the lakes today, both. Well, all three that are within walking distance. That's where I went for my walk today to get some exercise. Um, but yeah, so that's that. And this is this. So thank you so much, Super Chatters. Thank you so much, you guys who come here, listen, share great ideas, ask great questions, uh, stay curious, take care of your fish, your plants. And uh, if you're subscribed, make sure you click the bell icon. A lot of people got bounced out of that and if you don't leave a comment once in a while not in the live stream but like on a video and watch a little bit youtube assumes like oh they have 30 channels they're subscribed to they don't have time for that and so they just assume that you don't actually mean alert me so some people fall off the wagon and even stop being subscribed if it's been i think six months or a year since they checked in and interacted um so just a thought but um if everything's good on your end and you're happy then excellent but uh thanks again mods you did great super chatters awesome and everyone else lurkers listeners and fish lovers thank you so much um i'm getting tired tonight and uh i'm gonna take a break and uh, go join my wife after i cook up some pasta nochi i think we'll have some potato nochi all right guys uh have a good one take care and i'll talk to you later